There we are. So we're going to solve this equation first. X minus eight. Oh, let me make absolutely sure we're recording. I just get very. Yes, we are. OK. Now we're going to do this. X minus eight equals the square root of X minus six. Now we need to solve for X. It's an equation. We need to solve for X. Um, the problem is that one of these X's is trapped under a square root radical. We've got to get it out. How am I going to get it out? Well, I have to square a square root because the square and the square root are inverse functions. They'll undo each other and I'll get what's underneath. Now there is that old rule that comes in to ruin everything that says, wait a minute, you've got to do the same exact thing to both sides of the equation if you're going to maintain equality. All right. There now. Well, that means that this, which is a binomial, is go and I'm squaring it. That means X minus eight is multiplied by itself. Okay. Well, all right, if we have to, we have to. That's X squared minus eight X minus eight X plus 64 because negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64 and that equals x minus 6. So this is going to give us x squared minus 16 x plus 64 equals x minus six. Now notice, if you will, that this is a quadratic equation. Uh, we're going to have to use the zero principle. Let me write that down. And what that says is, hey, Barb, a quadratic equation has to be set equal to zero most of the time. So I'm going to subtract X from both sides of the equation, except I think I should put it in blue just to let you know it's a, it's a special step. Probably should have done the squaring in blue too, but I didn't. So now I'm going to subtract X, subtract X. And I'm going to add six. And add six. Now the reason I do that is that X minus X is zero plus negative six plus six is zero. And we know that zero plus zero is zero. Come over here, bring down the X squared. Now this is minus one X. So I've got negative 16 X minus one X is negative 17 X. Or if you prefer, you're subtracting 16 little X's and then you decide to subtract one more. Ooh, so that means you're subtracting 17 X's. 
And then you've got 64 plus 6, that will be plus 70. So x squared minus 17x plus 70 equals 0. Now I need to factor this and set each factor equal to 0. So that means since there's a 1 in front of the x squared, I'm going to check and see if I can uh, look, you know, get all the factors of 70, and if the factors of 70 will add up to 17, negative 17, then that means this is factorable and I don't need to use the quadratic formula. So positive 70 equals, all right, 1 times 70, 2 times 35, 3, no, 4? I don't know. 4 into 70 equals 1, 30, no, won't go evenly. 5, 5 will go evenly. Why don't I get the calculator? It's less messy. And I'm just, I'm about to say 70 divided by 5. That's 14, so that will be 5 times 14. And 7 times 10. And then 8 won't go evenly and 9 won't go evenly, so then they'll start to repeat 10 times 7. Well, none of these is going to add up to a negative number. So I've got to also recognize that a positive number equals a negative number times a negative number. Negative one times negative 70, negative two times negative 35, negative five times negative 14, and negative seven times negative 10, and negative seven plus negative 10 is indeed negative 17. So now we know the numbers we're going to use. X, X, negative 7, negative 10. And then I set each factor equal to 0. X minus 7 equals 0 and x minus 10 equals 0. Add 7 to both sides of this equation. Add 10 to both sides of this equation. And we will get x equals negative 7 and x equals 10. So let's mark through these and mark through those. All right, it looks like we have two answers here, negative 7 and 10, but do we really, really? Look over here. This says that our only answer is 10. What happened? Well, here's the unfortunate thing about this kind of equation. You have to actually check your answers because these kinds of, kinds of equations, radical equations, you have to be careful. There can be extraneous solutions. What's an extraneous solution? Just look at the first five letters. Extra. 
they're an extra answer that you get from solving a quadratic equation. These are the solutions to this quadratic equation. But they're not the solutions to the original equation. So we're going to have to check our answers. In the original equation. So let's put X equals negative seven here and X equals negative 10 here. And our original equation in both of these is X minus eight equals the square root of X minus six. And I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes. Uh, shouldn't it be positive seven instead of negative seven? You would think so, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. Thank you. Who are you? Oh, my name is Leslie. Leslie, you're going to get extra credit. Thank you. There. And there. Okay, thank you. X minus eight equals the square root of X minus six. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna try this positive seven, which still isn't listed as an answer, oh dear, and this negative 10. Here we go. 7 minus 8 equals the square root of 7 minus 6. 7 minus 8 is negative 1, equals the square root of 1. Negative 1 equals 1. That's not true. Oops, this is false. And what that means is X equals seven is not going to be a solution. Now, on the other hand, yes, and that should be 10. Goodness gracious, I wrote it that way here, but not there. All right. Now we're going to try 10 and we should get a true answer. 10 minus 8 equals the square root of 10 minus 6. 10 minus 8 is 2 equals the square root of 10 minus 6, which is 4. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, so we get 2 equals 2, and this is true. 2 does equal itself. True. And what that means is that x equals 10 is the only answer, the only solution. If you had answered 7 and 10, my math lab would have marked it wrong. Now, can you get partial credit on a test? Of course. But why settle for partial credit when just doing a quick check can get you full credit? Something to think about. Okay, so what is the trick here? Well, here we already had X minus eight, not under a radical, equaling X minus six under a radical. But here, the next problem, is that number two? Yeah. The next problem is a little different. So we have to talk about, this will give us a chance 
Let's go to a different page. This will give us a chance to talk about another rule. I am not going to multiply, well, I'm not going to raise both sides to a second power. I'm not going to square both sides yet because there's a roll, roll, which makes life easier for you. So it's a good roll. Always isolate your radical, isolate the radical. What does that mean? Well, it means I have to get this out of there. My radical, yes, here's my radical. My radical expression, but there's this plus two hanging out there, so I need to move it over to the other side. Minus two, minus two. Now, since this is zero, I'll have the square root of 2x minus 1 equals x minus 2. And let's rewrite that one. Looks too much like a 7. We'll just do this. Okay, now I now I have a radical a radical expression, a square root radical expression, and it equals stuff that's not under the radical. So now I am going to square both sides. And the square and the square root annihilate each other, and that will give me 2x minus 1 equals x minus 2 times x minus 2. So that 2x minus 1 equals x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So 2x minus 1 equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. And now I'm going to use the zero principle, which says I'll subtract 2x from both sides. And I'll add 1 to both sides. So that I get zero plus zero, which is zero. Equals x squared. I subtract 4x, then I subtract 2x, so I've subtracted 6x. And here I've got plus four plus plus one. That's plus five. And now I'm going to make sure that I can factor. Because if I can't, I've got to use the quadratic formula. And it just so happens that five equals one times five, and it also equals negative one times negative five and negative one plus negative five equals negative six. Doggone. So let's say x minus one 
times x minus 5 equals 0 over there. And then I'll set each one of these independently equal to 0. Uh, yeah. Okay, and then add one to both sides over here on the left and add five to both sides over here on the right. And this time I will try very hard to not get my signs all messed up. X equals plus one and X equals positive five. I wonder what's going on with me and negatives today. I hope I'm not going to be negative all day. Oh, 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 oh. I am really looking forward to a complete melt today so I can get to the store like everybody else. That I'm not looking forward to. Okay, here are my solutions, one and five and as you can see five works one doesn't so i'm going to check my answers check x equals one and x equals five And yes, OK, so I have to go back to the very original first line. That's a redundancy. 2x minus 1 plus 2 equals x. The square root of 2x minus 1 plus 2 equals x. OK, well, let's do positive one first. The square root of two times one minus one plus two equals one. So the square root of two minus one is one plus two equals one. So one plus two equals one. No, it's not. Three equals one is false. Now we go over here. Two times five minus one plus two equals Five. Two times five is ten minus one, that's nine. The square root of nine plus two equals five. So three plus two equals five, and that's true. Five equals five, true. Which means that this is not one of my solutions. And this is the only solution. OK, let's give this one a try. We have to solve this equation, x minus 5 equals the square root of 39 minus 5x. So I'm going to do what I've done before. I'm going to square both sides of this equation so that I can liberate, if you will, this x from this radical that's holding it prisoner, jailbreak. OK, x minus 5 times x minus 5. 
equals 39 minus 5x. Over here, I'm going to change the color of this binomial so that I can make it very clear, make very clear to you what I'm doing when I multiply <clears throat> x minus 5 times x minus 5 because it may have been a lot of years for some of you. I am going to take this X right here from this set of parentheses, from the first set of parentheses. Write it there. And then I'm going to take the minus five from the first set of parentheses and write it here. Then, here, I'm going to write what is in the second set of parentheses, x minus 5, and here too, x minus 5. And finish out the line th equals 39 minus 5x. Now, the reason I did this was that I'm going to use the distribution method, not the FOIL method. You can use FOIL if you want to, if you know it. X times X, X times five. X times X is X squared. X times minus five is minus five X. Then I'm going to take minus five and multiply it times X so that I have minus five X. And then minus five times minus five is plus 25. Because negative times negative is positive. Equals 39 minus five X. Oh x squared, yeah, yeah. All right, combine like terms, x squared minus 5x minus 5x is minus 10x plus 25 equals 39 minus 5x. Now I'm going to use the zero principle because I have a quadratic equation. Notice the highest power two. So to get a zero over here, I'll subtract 39 from both sides. And I will add 5x to the negative 5x so that I will get zero plus zero. And we know what that is, zero. But let's be explicit. And then I'll add my five X right here. Okay, I'll bring down my X squared. And then negative 10 X plus five X is negative five X or minus five X. And then 25 minus 39 is negative 14. And I'll put my equal sign right here. Now that I have a zero on the right hand side, and let me write zero principle, zero principle. Good, x squared. Well, no, let's just go ahead and factor. Parenthesis, 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 parenthesis. x squared separates into x and x. And now I have to factor 14. Well, I have to factor negative 14, but let's do the positive 14 first. 
because it's easier. 1 times 14 and 2 times 7. That's about as far as I can go with that one. So now let's recognize the fact that I'm actually factoring negative 17, negative 14. And what that's going to give me is negative 1 times positive 14, negative 2 times positive 7, positive 1 times negative 14, and positive 2 times negative 7. And notice that 2 plus negative 7 equals negative 5, which is my middle number right there. So I know that I'm going to use positive 2 plus 2 and negative 7 minus 7. Then I set Then I set my factors equal to zero. Okay, over here on the left, I subtract two from both sides of the equation. Two minus two is zero. I bring down the X. X equals zero minus two is negative now, on the right-hand side, for x minus 7 equals 0, I'll add 7 to both sides of the equation. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. I bring down the x. x equals 0 plus 7, which is 7. So now I have 2 possible solutions. And remember, since this is a square root radical equation, and I've squared both sides, I can get an extraneous solution. I can get one extraneous solution, or I can get two extraneous solutions, or I can get no extraneous solutions. You just never know. Life is so exciting. Here we go. I'm going to check. X equals negative 2 and X equals 7. Now I have to scroll back up for a minute so I can write down the original equation. X minus 5 equals the square root of 39 minus 5x. And over here, x minus 5 equals the square root of 39 minus 5x. So I take negative 2 and I put it in for the x's here. Negative 2 minus 5 equals the square root of 39 minus 5 times negative 2. Negative 7 equals the square root of 39 plus 10, because I have a minus 5 times a negative 2, and negative times negative is positive. Well, this is negative 7 equals the square root of 49, and we know the square root of 49 is 7, so negative 7 equals 7. And that's false because they're two different numbers. Goodbye, negative 2. Now we come over here and we try 7. 7 minus 5 equals the square root of 39 minus 5 times 7. 7 minus 5 is positive 2 equals the square root of 39 minus 
35. So 2 equals the square root of 4. And we know the square root of 4 is 2. 2 equals 2. That's a true statement. True of uh, 2 and true. 2 does equal itself. So that means x equals 7 is the only solution. to our equation, x equals seven. That wasn't too bad. The formula r equals two times the square root of five L can be used to approximate the speed r in miles per hour of a car that has left skid marks of length L in feet. How far will a car skid at 30 miles per hour? All right. Well, that's assuming the person uses his or her brakes, right? Um, here we have the formula R. R equals two times the square root of five L. And we're being asked, how far will a car skid? What is L? when R equals 30, 30 miles per hour. Letter R is often used for rate. <coughs> okay, well, <coughs> I've got to get L out from underneath that radical. For that reason, I am going to have to square both sides. But first, let's put our 30 in. And this will make life easier. This is a trick you're going to have to know really well at the end of the semester. So we might as well start learning it now. When you have a number equals a number times the square root, what you want to do when you can, is divide that number over to the other side like that. Now I can do that because two is multiplied by the square root of five L. So when that is multiplied by that, I can divide out that. 30 divided by two is 15. So you're going to have 15 equals the square root of 5L. Now I don't have to worry about a number in front, except one. Now I'm going to square both sides of the equation in order to get L out from underneath. Of course, five is gonna come out also. 15 times 15, I believe is 225, but let me get my trusty calculator. Second quit. 15 squared is 225. Okay, 225 equals 5L. And we're going to divide by 5 <clears throat> and divide by 5. So 225 divided by 5 
is 45. Forty-five feet. You're, you're going to skid forty-five feet if you're going only thirty miles an hour. Okay, one more, but the trick is the same. This time we're dealing with a pendulum and think of an old fashioned clock. OK, so you've got an old fashioned tick tock clock, a grandfather clock. This formula T equals two pi uh, multiplied by L over 32 can be used to find the period T in seconds of a pendulum of length L. So let's talk, look at what they're talking about. If you've got a pendulum that would have a vertical, yeah, there. It's going to go tick. And it's going to go back to center and then it's going to talk. So here's your tick. Here's your talk. Now one full period. I don't even know how I'll say this. Start here in the middle. Go tick. Back to center. Talk. Back to center. That's what the period is. So. I'm sure I'll think of some words to to say it. I guess ground zero to as far to the left as it'll go, then back all the way to as far to the right as it will go, then back to ground zero until I get a better, a better term for that. So T anyway is that period, how much time it takes. And L is the length of the pendulum. So that's what this says, T equals two pi. And there's a pi in it because this is circular motion, right? I mean, what if it went all the way around? It would be a circle. Two pi times the square root of L over something. L over 32. OK. Now it says, what is the length of a pendulum? What L? What is L that has a period of 1.8 seconds? That's a really fast pendulum. It's probably something used in a factory. So our T, our period is going to be 1.8 seconds. What we're going to do is put a 1.8 here, and the instructions tell us to use 3.14 for pi. And I left out my 32 there because I wasn't sure. OK, L over 32. All right, well, this is going to be 6.28. So 1.8 equals 6.28 times the square root of L over 32.
OK. Now. Even though I don't, even though 6.28 won't go into 1.8, there's a reason that I'm going to divide it out. And I'm going to tell you something else that feels strange. And that is you don't want, you don't want to put this in the calculator yet. The sooner you do it, the more round off error you're going to get, and it makes it much more likely that you will get the wrong answer. Calculators all have round off error. The more you use your calculator in a problem, the more that round off error is going to be building up to make subsequent calculations. It'll be included in those calculations. Every calculation you make is going to have a little bit less accuracy. I'm going to square both sides. Now what that's going to do here is that's going to give me L over 32. Over here, what it's going to do is give me 1.8 over 6.28 squared. Now I haven't decided yet what I want to do. I'm going to multiply both sides by 32. So that L is going to equal 32 times 1.8 divided by 6.28 squared. Now, all I have to do is put that in the calculator and life will be much easier. So I'm moving that over there. That's what L is going to equal. And I'm going to, what am I going to do? Oh yeah, that. No, I need my calculator. We'll do that in a minute. Okay, and I want to get the viewfinder, the detached LCD. Clear. All right. Thirty two times, which you can't see, I just wrote it up there. Parentheses one point eight divided by six point twenty eight close parentheses squared. Now let me pull this up. This is what I typed in the calculator. 32 times parentheses 1.8 divided by 6.28 close parentheses squared. Now, moment of truth, we're going to see what the answer is. 2.63 and they say round to the nearest hundredth which is two decimal places, so 2.63. And I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that I got the right answer. All right, here we go. Woo yes! Okay, look at that ugly sucker. Here are two decimal places right there, 62, but the two is followed by an eight, which will cause the two to round up to a three. And that's how we get 2.63 feet for the length of the pendulum that has period 
1.8 seconds. 